So we're in this series about rest, um, and I hope last week um, you guys thought it was good. Um, rest is a wonderful thing, and sometimes we, we just don't see that it is a wonderful thing, right? Because years and for years and years and years, I spent my time just going nonstop. Because and part of that reason why I did that is because other people around me were doing that, right? I, the people who I surrounded myself with were not believers, right? But they were going nonstop and nonstop and nonstop. And, and part of me was like, man, I really, I'm tired, right? I'm just getting worn down. I just can't do this all the time. And I ask, so I have to ask the question of myself, like, when we were in those moments, w was I going because somebody else saw, or I, because I was seeing somebody else going, right? Does that make sense? Or was, were they going because they saw me going, right? Was it a reciprocal thing? Like, well, I'm not, it's like competition, right? You never want to lose, and you're, gonna ever, you're never going to give up. If you watched the Georgia and Alabama game last night, that was a very good game. That's all there is to say about that. Neither teams wanted to give up, right? They had that oof about it. That's what I felt like in my years of my go, go, go. I didn't want to give up because nobody else was run, ready to give up either. You know what I mean? Nobody else wanted to slow down until I became a Christian until people started talking into my life, it's like, dude, do you like need to slow down? You need to spend some time with your family, right? Until I started surrounding myself with other people who knew that rest was important, okay? See, culture drives us this way to, to not think that rest is good a lot of the times. And we can't keep up with what the, the world wants and expects from us, right? We have a standard to live by as Christian people, thankfully. You know? Rest is important. And I do believe, like I said last week, there are, re there are seasons of, ta of, of our lives where, where rest will not be as much as other parts of our lives. And that's okay. As long as long as we're finding rest in those busy seasons, okay? And today's scripture talks about rest, obviously, right? And how God found rest. And I want to talk about how we can get rest and what, God, uh, what God's example should mean and not mean uh, for us. And I say not mean because we're not God, right? God's rest is perfect, Everything that God does is perfect. We are far from perfect. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Right. We also have to, when we look at Scripture, again, we have to observe context. What we as humans like to take Scripture out of context most of the time, right? No, I wouldn't say most. I would, yeah, most of the time is pretty good. Yeah. Because, like, I say we have to do that because what scripture actually means is far different from what it meant to somebody else way back in the day for the original audience, right? We don't know what exactly they were going through. We can read in some history books, right? We can see some of the, the, the surrounding cultural things that were happening but, and get in a good, good, good idea of what was happening to understand, contextually speaking, what they were going through so we can appropriately apply Scripture to our lives, right? So when we, when we look at Scripture, we have to talk about the context so that we can place it safely into our lives without misinformation or misrepresentation. Does that make sense? And that goes both ways, right? We are faced with people on the streets or whatever. You know, you can look up TikTok reels or Facebook reels or all that kind of popular stuff. I don't have TikTok. But we can look at this kind of stuff and people like get in each other's face. Well, you know, God, 
if God was so good, right, this is where the scripture says it, and blah, 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 and they're not a believer, right? They're, mis- they're misapplying scripture, right? That goes both ways. So we can't sit here and wave our flag and be like, oh, no, God is so good. But, like, again, we have to know the context of what scripture says. That's why when we talk about the scripture today, this scripture in particular, we have to understand the context, so, if you guys have your Bibles, you can open them into uh, Genesis 2. We're going to be in verses 1 through 3. If you do not have your Bible, you can look at your phone if you want to do that. Some people have their own versions. They like to read, you know, the message or the amplified or whatever. We're looking at the NIV version today behind us. It'll be on the screen. It says, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed in all their vast array. God's creating earth, right? All this stuff is being done in Genesis 1. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. Verse 3, Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of, uh, from all the work of creating that he had done. Amen. We, in this scripture, in today's passage, God um, takes a break from work, right, after creating the universe and everything in it. God's passive act of rest on the seventh day anticipates the coming law of the Sabbath, right? where they will be placed in stone on Mount Sinai. That's where we get the Ten Commandments. The context of Genesis 1 and 2, uh, chapters 1 and 2, strongly affirms the idea of God's rest rest being a cessation of work or an ending of work, right? Not not a reinvigorating or reinvigoration uh, after work. He's not doing it to get uh, refilled with something, okay? The narrative tells us which things, uh, tells us which thing God created in each of the first day. That's what we get to see in chapter uh, one of Genesis. When God said, let there be light, the light appeared, yeah? What a wonderful thing. God simply spoke creation into existence. That's all he had to do. His power is displayed through the creation of light. That's it, you know? We see mountains, we see seas, we see the sun, the moon, the stars, we see plants, we see animal life, and then finally we see humanity, all spoken, right? Man, with that first display of God saying, let there be light, everything else follows. There's parallels between the first, uh, the first three days and the second, and the second part, you know, the, the last three days. There's a lot of parallels between there. But when we get to the seventh day, there's a sharp contrast that takes place. Instead of creating... There is a word that's used in Jewish culture. It's called Shabbat, right? There is Shabbat. Instead of creating, there is Shabbat. Instead of God doing more, right, he ceased from doing. The Hebrew word translated from rest and that we're seeing in Genesis 2, uh, 2 includes other ideas of being tired, but the main definition uh, of Hebrew, of this Hebrew word Shabbat, is to cease or to stop. To cease or to stop. He ceased creating on the seventh day. All that he created was very good. That's what he said. Everything I've done is very good. And this work was finished. See, but God didn't actually need rest, correct? God doesn't need rest. God's all-powerful. God isn't subject to fatigue like we are. The, the restful act 
that is being displayed here was done for us as an example or a model for us to follow. You guys picking up on that? There is so much science and data today around getting sleep, yeah? I mean, people are like, oh, you need this amount of sleep. You know, wear your whoop or whatever. If you, you know, wear your, I, I have, my Garmin tracks how I sleep. And so if you guys have a sleeping app or whatever you guys follow, like, they're a big proponent of that, right? Again, what we're seeing isn't new. We have to be regenerated. We are humans. We get tired. We can thrive when we have a lot of sleep. Four hours for most of you. <laughs> no, but we are most productive and effective, right, when we get good rest. Would you agree with that? Yeah. The Sabbath law was established, though, not to be a burden for us, but to be a blessing for us. You guys get that? Because we, and here's why I say that. Let's, uh, Mark 2, verse 27, it's going to be up here on the screen. It says, the Sabbath was made, uh, then he said, this is Jesus, then he said, the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. He was referring, Jesus here was referring to the Jewish traditions that were uh, taking precedence over God's commands. Okay? What we are seeing is Jesus is pushing back in those moments, right? We all know that the Pharisees, the teachers, the scribes of the law were zealous. They, they loved the law, but they also love adding on to the law, right? That's those traditions, right? I know Jewish people that they take the Sabbath so seriously, and maybe um, Cam does as well, I don't know, but they, like the day before, they're like prepping toilet paper, everything, because if they peel a piece of toilet paper, they consider that work. What? <laughs> but that's crazy to me, you know what I mean? Like, that's, that's taking it too far, right? I think. that's For me, that's taking it too far. Um, Jewish leaders of that time were laying so many burdens on the people's back, not only spiritually, but physically as well. So Jesus, in this, when he said that in Mark 2, 27, he's attacking what they are saying. The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So I have to ask a question when I think about, when I'm reading scripture, right, and we should all do this, is like, how can I apply this to my life today, right? How can I get, and how, what can I gain from this part of scripture? So, and I think it's an appropriate question to ask because it helps us to understand our obligation in these moments, right? You see, we as people, like to pick and choose, right? Uh, I'm not going to do this because it doesn't fit into my routine. I'm not going to do this because it makes me uncomfortable. I am going to do this because it makes me feel good, right? We like to pick and choose a lot of what we do. If we didn't, <clears throat> we wouldn't have sermons on giving, if, it, if we didn't like to pick and choose, we wouldn't have sermons on uh, obedience or servanthood and the list could go on, right? On rest, right? But we like to fit the things that we want into our lives and push the things away from us that we don't want in our life. Does that make sense? Yes, I get it. We are under the new covenant by Jesus' blood. I get that. I 100% get that. But we are, we, are no, we are still under the law. And I say that, and I've said it many, many times before, we are not guiltily under, held under that law. 
we are joyfully bound to the covenant now because of Jesus, because of what he has done for us. So when we, when we talk about uh, Sabbath or anything else related to the Old Testament commandments, we need to understand the context and be respectful towards it. Does that make sense? So we, we as modern day Christians um, look to see how we can observe the Sabbath. It's only appropriate to see how Christians before us observed it. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. The rest of the, uh, the day of rest is the day of meeting, is the day of meeting. And so that is the actual question that's being asked. Oh, what happened there? Um, there we go. And we get this from the Old Testament. And so we, instead of saying, um, how do we, um, let's see, we have to ask the question of when did the church meet, okay? Because that was their day of Sabbath. Traditional Jewish law, they met on Saturdays. They were in the temples on Saturdays. But being new Jewish converts into Christianity, I say that with quotations um, because they were still Jewish by heritage and they were coming under uh, Jesus' teachings. Um, they met. We have to ask when they met. Okay? And so we have to look at Acts 2 in these moments. Acts 2, verses 46 through 47. And it says, Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their, ho- in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And, they, and the Lord added to their number daily, uh, daily those who were being saved. So when did they meet? Daily. Daily. It's not on a Sunday. You get what I'm saying? Not just on a Sunday. If there was a day that Christians did meet regularly, yes, it was daily, but it would be the first day of the week, which was was today, right? For them, not on Saturdays, but on a Sunday. That's kind of traditionally like why we've taken that approach and met on Sundays. Because it's an honor of Christ's resurrection day. And, it, and so the Christian, the early Christians wanted to observe that, but they also met every single day. So in the light of, of the revelation of Jesus Christ in the Gospels, we should interpret the, uh, the Sabbath law contextually, not rigidly, right? And in accordance with the spirit of law, not the letter of law. If you, per- if you prefer... While you want to get rest, if you prefer to take a a full weekend off from work, please go ahead and do that. I have no problem with that. If um, you want to take one day a week away from work, then do that as well. If you like to take intermittent breaks at work, right? Smoke breaks or, you know, whatever you guys want to do. You know what I mean? Go ahead. Do that. I don't know. Stay refreshed. (laughs) If you uh, reserve a bulk of your time for rest and you're in the evenings of your home, that's awesome too. There are many ways that we can practice the Sabbath, right? However, (laughs) we have to make sure we're practicing the Sabbath. And what do I mean by that? We as Christians should be encouraged to take at least one full day off, I get that, from work, from work each week to rest, to relax, to rejuvenate. This should be more intentional than any, uh, and deliberate more than any other time you're taking off, right? And during that time, I said, however, because it should involve personal contemplation, it should inv- involve you meditating on God's word, okay? It should uh, involve prayer. The Sabbath should be around God. That's all there is to that. So what I'm saying is that 
if you're taking your Sabbath and you're being intentional about that, your Sabbath, instead of saying like, oh, I can't do that, I'm, in, you know, I'm, I'm doing this my Sabbath day, this is my day of rest, you have to have some fruit involved with that. You get what I mean? You have to be opening up your Bible. You have to be spending it with God. You can't be sitting on the couch, you know, binge watching, you know, Squid Games, The Challenge, or, you know, Netflix and chilling, you know, or Football Sunday. That's not, that's not a Sabbath. It should be tied to God, who modeled and instituted this day for us. I'm not saying that there's not ro- nothing wrong with s- sitting around watching Netflix. If we don't observe the Sabbath in our lives, if we don't take meaningful breaks from work, then we're going to, or we are more liable to burn out. And if we burn out, well, guess what? We are more liable to self-destruct. We are more liable to attacks from Satan, from the enemy, to infiltrate our lives, to plug little things, little lies into our lives. And if, if we as Christians don't observe the Sabbath in our lives, well, um, we're going to hit a wall. We're going to reach a limit. We're going to snap at our spouses or our parents or at our kids or whatever it is, you know. And those will have dire consequences. Sometimes it feels like it's not we don't have that real possibility for us to take that time away as well. I get that. Our lives are busy. They're chaotic, right? Who here has a busy and chaotic life? I'm double-handing it. Right? We have appointments that we have to get to. We have responsibilities. We have deadlines, yeah? Do we have so many obstacles in our way? And we have obstructions that keep us from, from the ability to take breaks. But we have to, and I and I am reiterating this, we have to prioritize rest in our lives. We really do. We have to be intentional about it. Because it's gonna not only, you know, give us new life, it's not only gonna con- you know help confirm who Jesus is in our life and who God is in our life, but we are also going to be more effective and productive at work or in ministry or you know, with our families and stuff like that. We are going to be more present. There have been times in my life where I've been so busy and so just like, Mah, that like my family will talk to me and I'm like zoned out because I can't focus, because I can't plug any more energy into my family. Who here has been that way? Yes, that's the truth of the matter. But what I've realized from my go, go, go until these days where I'm like, no, I'm going to take a little time for myself, right? What I've noticed is that I can focus better not only on my relationship with Jesus Christ, but I can focus better on my relationship, on my marriage, right? I can focus better with relationships within this church. I can focus better on relationships uh, in the community and really, really enjoy those instead of just being there. I can be present. And again, not all of us have the privilege of a healthy work-life balance. I do understand that. And that's my prayer. Um, And some people have to um, take that time by necessity to to have a lack of balance in their life. You know, they some of us work uh, terrible hours. It's I hate it for those of you who do. Um, But we live in this fallen world, right? We do what we can for our family. But I do, I do push for a Sabbath rest, right? And that is time with God. That is time with God. It's a spiritual rejuvenation. And some of us have control over 
more areas in our life. We have choice in the matter of what, what time we have, right? And we have that healthy life, work-life balance. And uh, sometimes we still don't prioritize well enough. People who have no control over their situation in life should take their concerns to the Lord and choose to be a good witness to others in the midst of a bad situation. Okay? It's easy for me to say because I've been down that route. If we want to observe the Sabbath day, we want to look at God's work that he did for us in the creation story, right? We want to observe that. We have to be focused on that. We can't find rest in our life if we aren't finding comfort in God. That's all there is to that. It would be, if, if we are going to be so um, engaged with rest in our life but not finding comfort in God, it's meaningless and counterintuitive of what is best for us. We'll just continue to run ourselves ragged, right? What is, what's the benefit of seeking goodness of rest, the goodness of rest, if our focus isn't on God. If we're more concerned on the goodness of God's blessings rather than the presence of God in our lives, what benefit does that have for us? Our relationship or our rest or our Sabbath will be worthless if that's what we're focused on. It's just a blessing If we want to observe the Sabbath day and make it holy, right? There was a part in this scripture in verse 3. That said, hey, can you go to verse 3? Uh, Genesis 2, verse 3. Then God blessed the seventh day and made it holy. Because on it, uh, on it the, he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. Making it holy, that word is sanctifying, right? It's sanctification. It's being set apart. That's what we are called, right? That's what our lives should be reflective of, right? As Christians, right? We are set apart. So when we're finding, when we're trying to observe Sabbath, when we're trying to make it holy, we should be in prayer. We should be meditating on God's word. We should be thanking him for this allowance, right? Thanking for all the blessings that we have because of him and that we will have because of him. We should be surrendering our hearts in those moments and, 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 uh, perse- and the perseverance that we face day to day. And we should ask him for strength. We should ask him for endurance that we find in him, not in ourselves. We should be asking for the spirit to lead us, right? And that all comes through prayer and meditation. Um, I had skipped a, a, a part. Um, so that part that I was just talking to through prayer and meditation is one of the things that you should be doing on a Sabbath day, right? So sorry about that. Uh, prayer. <laughs> The second thing that you should be doing on the Sabbath day, this is where I get ahead of myself, right? The second thing you should be doing on your, uh, you should do is find a a vocational time. What do I mean by that? Um, A vocation, an a vocation is something that is pleasurable for you. Does that make sense? Some of us, uh, and and that will take a skill or an expertise, and. There, there, we have people in here that like to, to have like, they're like woodworking and stuff like that or, or you know, brewing your own beer. That's kind of cool. Um, but it's something that others usually do for a living, right? That's what avocational uh, living is, right? Or time is. For me, it's a sport, right? For others, there, it's a sport in this room as well. But it could be anything from carpentry to music. There's a lot of people who love to spend time playing the guitar. Ben loves playing the guitar. I wish I could do that. 
I probably could if I took time and did it, right? Right. Again, I like to run and I like to cycle. For me, it, does, it allows me to do a few things in, that, in those time periods. It allows me to not only stay healthy, right? For the most part, you're like, Matt, I've seen you eat. Um, and, and then um, the other part of it allows me to really focus my time on God in those moments. I, for me, as I'm running or I'm on a bike, I have concentrated time of prayer where I'm just like, bam, I'm like hammering out miles and I'm just praying, God, get me through this. I got five more miles, right? No, but I do. I spend time in prayer. I re, it's a time for me of reflection. I get to think about scripture that I've read that week, right? And I'm like, man, this scripture is like really hitting home with me because I don't understand it, right? Or this one's really hitting home with me because it's really putting me into a, like, in the check. Like, Matt, you really need to get your life together. I wrestle with scripture, and this is a great time for me to do that because I'm vulnerable in those moments, right? I'm like weak in multiple areas of my life in those moments. And so I get to really not only embrace God in those moments, but I'm out in the fresh air, you know what I mean? I'm seeing the beauty of what God's put out before me, and I'm like taking that in. And so that helps me. I don't know what you guys like to do, you know, what helps bring you closer to God, but that's for me. Um, that, that's what it does it for me, partly of it, you know. So if you do have, if, if you do have something you could do, like if there is something in your life that you do regularly to like help you relax and find time, is it bringing you closer to God? And if it's not, I would encourage you to incorporate God into those moments, does that make sense? The third thing I would say if you're trying to observe Sab Sabbath, right, is nurture relationships in those moments. Call people, right? Find the time to, to really harness that aspect of it, right? This time, with, it can be time with your family, it can be time with your friends, but it's, it, it, that time should be set aside to pay full attention to the most important people in your life. Bless you. We are, um, we, you know, here at Refuge Point Church, we love relationships. Do we always get them all right? Absolutely not. Do we work hard at them? We try to. We really, really do. Um, and that's why we have small groups here. You know, there's a small group that meets at my house uh, Sunday mornings, or Sunday mornings, <laughs> Sunday nights, thank you, <laughs> Sunday nights. <laughs> and we are cultivating some really good relationships in that. We have a new person that's coming to our group, and man, he is just so good. It brings so much to the group when we add more people into it. And that's why I'm always encouraging people to join a small group or start a small group. If you want to, we have some college students here that come to ours, but if they wanted to have their own, I would be blessed to, to be a part of that or see it or help them try to figure it out, right? I would love that. We also have started this men's group in the mornings uh, once a month. We meet for breakfast to be men of the church, to be better husbands, to be better fathers, you know, whatever it is, wherever stage of area in your life, that's part of it. You know, we've had great women's, women's Bible studies in the past as well. I encourage that because what it's doing is it, it's nurturing relationships. So if you find yourself, it's like, man, I really want a meaningful relationship. Plug God into that, right? That's part of a, a, of a Sabbath, right? We serve our community well around here. We shut down the church on certain Sundays and we serve our community. That's important to us because it not only does it bring us together in, in a serving opportunity, but it cultivates, I can, under, I can see why people don't like to do yard work, you know, as husbands and wives or whatever it is, you know. It's why I don't let my kids... You know, do stuff in the yard sometimes because it's like, Bruh. 
but it allows us to cultivate those relationships. Yeah, you're cutting grass. We've had people in the past that have left this church because of nurtured relationships, misnurtured relationships. I, that's what they said, right? Whoa, I must be on fire. Um, they, would, they came up to me, and they were like, hey, we're, we're leaving the church. Sorry. We're leaving the church. I was like, okay, like, why? Why are you leaving? Normally, my question is that first, like, why? Why? You know, you kind of, like, kind of get, like, ruffled feathers a little bit, like, why are you leaving? And the, and, and the answers were that we didn't, we're not as connected as we would like to be, right? We're not as connected as we like to be. And so my first intuitive question to then ask is like, well, how are you getting connected, all right? And usually the response, I've had responses this way, is like, we're not doing anything. <laughs> well, that could be a problem then. If you're not feeling connected in church, it's probably because you're not doing anything to get connected to church. Does that make sense? We have to ask that question. If we're sitting here in this room, or if we're new, or whatever, or wherever you're at in life, right? If you're at work, or if you're in school, or just daily stuff, if you're not feeling connected, what are you doing to get connected? If you want to be, if you're like seeing relationships, I see relationships within these church walls, and I'm like, man, I wish I had something like that. I do. I look around and I see that. And you know that, that whole FOMO thing, right? Fear of missing out. I have that at times. I get jealous. I'm like, man, why didn't I get invited to it? You know? That's not like, I'm not saying that, but it's like who we are as people, yeah? But if, if we have that feeling while we're sitting in these chairs, what are you doing to get connected? Connect yourself. Introduce yourself. If you want to talk to Ben, you have to talk to Ben. Right? That's right. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to see you, and I'm going to talk to you. Ben's not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not calling him out. It's just a... Yeah, it's, <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> but that's just the way things, how people are. You know what I mean? You have to put yourself out there. If we want to be in a relationship with people at work, at work, at church, or, you know, whatever it is in our lives. We have to be plugging into it, right? We have to do that. So my challenge for all of us here this week is to see, uh, not only to see value in observing the Sabbath, right? But I challenge us here to see value of having God visibly in our lives, visibly in our lives. And that's through prayer. That's through activities. That's through conversations. That's through actions. That's through relationships. Okay? Be challenged this week. Be challenged this week. I gave you these cards for a reason. You get me? Make yourself uncomfortable. Don't walk up to you know, somebody here at church, like, hey, man, we invite you to Christmas Eve service. <laughs> or maybe that is how you can do it. I don't know. Get outside of yourself. So as we close today, we have communion. We do communion on the first day of the month. You guys can come up. We do communion on the first day of the month, okay? Our salvation is secured by Jesus Christ. If we call upon his name as Lord, that's how our, our salvation is secured. Our Sabbath is ultimately in him. That's all there is to it. Our Sabbath, our complete rest, is ultimately in a relationship with Jesus Christ. He brings us rest. Jesus' invitation to us of take my yoke upon you and you will find rest for your souls, 
should be freeing. Correct? As we take communion together, I ask you guys to stand up. We're going to start a disco party. I ask you guys can move forward. If you guys don't want to take communion, I'm totally fine with that as well. Uh, but communion's over here. Our, we t this is a take it at your own pace type deal. Stay in prayer, whatever it is. You guys can start moving around and go find your seats. All right. While you guys are doing that, I'm going to continue to talk though. As we take communion today, I ask that we remember his mighty act for each person here. I ask that we recognize what he has accomplished for us all. I ask that we have the courage to call upon his name in these moments. I ask that we can stop being complacent in our lives, but that we can be an active component in his kingdom. As we take communion together as a family, I ask for repentance. I ask for grace and mercy. I ask you guys to be vulnerable in these moments because he already knows what you have going on in your life. Father God, 